Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are in the VAB today, as you can see. Uh, last episode, our uh, attempt to bring a crew down to our uh, lunar surface station uh, failed due to, well, me. But um, the crew out there has about 170 some odd days of life support supplies, which I think is more well than enough time for us to reconfigure the lander, strap it to a rocket, and get it out there. And I'm hoping we can do this in something like the 20 to 30 day range with a, a little bit of rush building to help us out. But uh, the first step of this is going to be to reconfigure our lander um, to a much more high thrust to weight ratio uh, kind of thing. Um, I forgot what I saved it as. Let me... It's three person lunar lander, that would be it. There it is. Awesome. So I'm going to try to reconfigure this thing. We're going to get it attached to a new delivery system. It's probably going to need a, another stage below it to uh, help it capture around the moon. And then, uh, well, I'll leave that to the fast forwardy bits. So uh, here we go. Now the modification of everything turned out to be uh, a whole lot easier than I thought, except that uh, my menu for rerouting the parts uh, it doesn't exist. It's just not there. It should be there, but it's not. So after trying to rack my brain about how not to just uh, press the button to exit, I saved the uh, craft as uh, something new, exited the VAB, jumped back into the VAB, let it load for a considerable amount of time, and then bang, there's my reroute menu. So we're going to reroute to the uh, docking port up top remove our lunar module descent engine and empty all of our fuel tanks and uh, I did want to just uh, check uh, five asterisk twos will provide considerably uh, more thrust than our lunar descent engine which I think is 40 some odd kilonewtons these are about uh, 20 something a piece and so then we'll just uh, top off our tanks with the new uh, aerosine and N2O mixture and get everything dialed in there and then yeah bingo looks like we're gonna get about three kilometers per second with a total burn time of seven minutes and 26 seconds so that is uh, double what we are getting I mean it's not we're getting less overall Delta V but we're gonna get it twice as fast so uh, that works pretty well for that we'll uh, bring out an uh, oh an Agena core geez I'm losing it today so we do need a means of capturing this into orbit around the moon and providing the functionality of uh, working us towards docking and uh, also some form of avionics control. Um, I think with the core we should be able to net the profit of the avionics tonnage of the um, crewed module even without crew in it. So now it's just a matter of uh, getting a tank of appropriate size and giving us long enough run time. Uh, it's you know, roughly 800 meters a second or so to capture into orbit, and then we'll probably want a little bit more than that to help us with uh, rendezvous and docking. And of course, if we have a little left in the tank after all that is said and done, then, you know, it's just profit. That'll help us uh, with our uh, initial descent towards the moon, maybe help take care of that uh, initial deorbit burn. And now we need to add it to a delivery vehicle. Since this is going up on its own, uh, I did kind of wrestle with myself if I wanted to do a uh, DN1X or a DN... Oh, really, it was the DN1AX or the DN2BX. Uh, we went with the 2B because I was just like, well, I would rather have entirely too much delta V than not enough. Uh, this entire package payload here comes in uh, a little under 30 ton. So it's fairly mild I guess and we can use uh, kind of our mid-range rocket for that we just need to make sure that tanks get fueled because sometimes when you pull things out of a sub-assembly menu they are not fueled which was the case here we had to add the liquid hydrogen mix both to the core stage and to the HG3 upper stage and a little bit to the boosters just to make sure everything has the appropriate mixture of fuels there we go and then uh, of course play with the action groups a lot uh, everything tends to get a little screwy, especially when you pull things from uh, the sub-assembly menu. Um, there's some trick about leaving uh, blank stages uh, above something when you save it to a sub-assembly menu. I just never actually remember to do that. Yeah, shame on me. Make sure auto strut is set on. Adjust the fairing size because it just doesn't want to do that automatically. And then uh, 
yeah, get the arrow fairing on and turn it over to old me. All right, so I am going to run a simulation of this just uh, to make sure that we can have control of the lunar lander uh, or of the package itself. Uh, once we separate from the HG3 stage, uh, I'm a little concerned because I've had some issues where if the first part is a computer core, even if you have a crew capable command pod under it, you'll be fine. But if the first part is a crude pod and then you add an avionics core to it, even if you're below your tonnage, you won't get avionics. It's a weird setup, but uh, we're just going to test for that just to make sure. And of course, for Delta V reasons. All right, but uh, by the numbers, we've got more than enough Delta V. What we don't have is a launch pad. Good thing that doesn't stop us. Uh, yeah, we'll push you back off to the side. We don't really need to line up for anything, so let's just get this show on the road. All the engines running. There's a good liftoff. All right, well, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, try to get this to orbit, and then uh, we'll pick up the rest of our testing there. It's a solid choice, the DN2BX. Uh, it turned out to have uh, right around the right amounts of Delta V, but uh, I thought I was going to be way over. The numbers there in the MechJeb window were not exactly uh, accurate, I guess. Or they were, they weren't, in, and they weren't accurate in the VAB. Anyway, I thought I was going to have uh, a lot of excess fuel. I thought we were going to be able to complete orbit just on the core stage when I was building this. Uh, that turns out not to be the case, but we are well within tolerance, well within the threshold of being able to move this uh, payload to the moon without any issue. But if you look down in the bottom right-hand corner, as boosters fly off and collide into each other, I forgot to remove the crew. So the, the one thing I wanted to test for here was that I would have control of this thing without a crew on board. Uh, I've already screwed that up. So, yeah, my uh, <laughs> track record of not screwing things up is certainly uh, in jeopardy. But uh, the rest of this launch goes really, really smoothly. I actually think I got a pretty good uh, ascent profile on this. No real complaints there. Just the, the weird thing I wanted to, to mention here is that we have a picture of two Kerbals down in the corner. This crew canister is rated for three Kerbals. I know for a fact it can contain three Kerbals because I've seen it in the, the menu when we launched the previous mission, like uh, with Kerbal construction time or whatever, when you have that option to choose what crew goes in it right before the launch. There were definitely three seats in there. And so later on, when I will pull these two Kerbals out to test if I still have avionics, I s there's no picture for the third one that shows up later. I have no idea who he is or if it's a rated pilot, because that would certainly go affecting the uh, outcome of this test run. Because I still actually don't know if I will have avionics control of this vessel once the crew is out. And again, that was the one main thing I wanted to test. Anyway, there's core stage separation and a good light on the HG3. Uh, everything has performed absolutely nominally so far. I just uh, need to turn off the fuel for our uh, orbit capture stage so we're not wasting it just uh, tapping the RCS here. Uh, a little past our apoapsis now and descending, but uh, in no real danger of hitting atmosphere again, and I'll turn you back over to old me for live commentary. Alright, uh, 274 by 167 with the 3413 left in the tank. Uh, I'll take that. Um, but I did kind of screw up here. Uh, I brought two Kerbals along, so that's not going to really help us test out much of anything. Uh, good thing this is just a simulation, and we can just uh, maybe tuck them here into the fairing while we proceed with the rest of our testing. Nope, wrong button. There we go. EVA. Good job. What are... Wow. Okay, then. Yep, you can just go uh, hang out down here somewhere. We've got some testing to do. Uh, decouple. Uh, 
turn our tanks here back on and pull ourselves away. And it does appear that we have uh, full avionics control. That is fantastic. That is exactly what I need to see. I, I would like to make sure that these solar panels are going to be enough to keep uh, this core charged and this stuff charged, but I th I'm pretty confident we're going to be all right there. Um, 1,354 meters per second, and this will be responsible for capturing us around the moon and uh, doing any of the small maneuvers needed to put us on a rendezvous path with the uh, Artemis uh, 3L. Um, and hopefully docking as well. There might be a little left in there to help ease their descent into the moon. I know we, uh, we had a little bit left with all of our supply drops in their transfer stages to help with that, so hopefully that'll still be a thing. Um, awesome to know that we have avionics even without a crew. That is perfect. Now we just hope that it uh, stays the same when we launch without a crew, or hope that I can remember to remove the crew uh, before launch. So uh, I really do not think that we can separate this and have avionics. This should be the only automated core on board. So we have to complete docking with that or we're just kind of dead in the water. But uh, I am not above pumping fuel from our lander into this stage to keep us going. We could refuel a little bit from the Artemis. I know there's a little fuel left in the ascent stage that's docked out there also. So those will be th uh, those problems that we will be uh, sussing out once we get there. Ta -da. So uh, next time, we're going to launch this baby. Uh, I'm going to rush build the hell out of it. It says it should take nominally 50 days. We're going to try to cut that time in at least half. Um, I mean, the crew that's up there was anticipating and being in space for a while, but I'm pretty sure they were also anticipating being able to go outside and stretch their legs and stuff. So for right now, they're kind of like uh, Apollo 13-ing it. Not the most comfortable of uh, circumstance, but anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.